today is day two of reading the final game. Yesterday, or Monday, we read it to just understand what the story is about, to learn what the story is. If we're talking about teamwork, we know that it's a story about a game called, what, what kind of game is it? What are they playing, Timothy? Yeah, hockey, ice hockey. So we know that it's a, a story about playing ice hockey. Today, we are going to reread the final game and take a closer look at the characters to understand the story better. And the strategy that we are going to work on as we read is making inferences. And this isn't something we've really talked a lot about in second grade. You've probably heard it in first grade a little bit. So I'm going to go over what making inferences is. So I have this little poster to help you that I'm going to keep up as we read through the story. So making inferences. When the author doesn't tell you everything, he or she wants you to infer. In order to make an inference, you use clues from the text and what you already know, and that makes an inference, kind of like addition. You're adding two things together to get a whole. With inferencing, you're using the text clues, so you're using the words, the pictures, the things that are happening. That's our clues. What I know is what you know about whatever the author is talking about, okay, using your background knowledge, and then that makes an inference. So it'll make more sense once we start reading. So what we're going to do is we're going to read, I'm going to stop, and we're going to make some inferences together. So this is a good little graphic organizer to help us make inferences. So as you see, the first part of making inferences is what? Text clues over here. This says clues. So we, as we stop, we're going to write in here clues from the story. Next is what I know. And right here it words it differently. Prior knowledge, that means knowledge that you already have. And it equals a inference. So what are we doing today? Making inferences. Very good. All right, we are going to read. The final game. So we're going to point to the title of the story for me and read it with me. The final game. Does anybody remember what the genre of this story is? If you don't remember, you know that it is on the top up there where it says genre. Cherish, what's the genre? She knows what it is. Take on. Realistic. Fiction. Does anybody remember what realistic fiction means? Rachel, what does realistic fiction mean? Right. It's things, the characters, the things that are happening, they're illustrations. It didn't really happen, but... It could happen, okay? So, flip the next page, please. Flip to the next page, please. All right, point to the first word. The word is Ready? When I was a boy growing up on the prairies, hockey was the most important thing in my life. I had a crippled leg and foot, so I couldn't wear skates. But that didn't matter. I could play bowl in my moccasins, so my teammates called me Moccasin Boy. Our hockey team was called the Wolves. I joined the team late in the season along with my friends Pato and Anita. Pato was small but fast. Anita, who could play as well as any boy, was the first girl to join the league. At first, Pato, Anita, and I played well and were part of the team. But whenever we lost the game, some of the wolves began to grumble. Travis, who was our best forward, called us the Wimps and said we weren't good enough to play on our team. Our coach, Mr. Mateau, told Travis to stop complaining and look after his own game. So instead of complaining, Travis ignored us. He never passed the puck to Anita or Pateau in practice, not even in game. Mean? 
think we can make a difference about that in a little bit, okay? So let's keep reading. Keep that in your brain. I like what you're thinking. But somehow we managed to win enough to make it to the finals against the best team in the league. The Bombers were tough and fast, and the final game would be played on their home ice. The Bombers had a wonderful rink with new dressing rooms and grandstand seating on, on one side with a huge sign that read, Home of the Bombers. This would be the biggest game ever for the Wolves. The more I thought about it, the more tense and worried I became. Flip the page. Yes, Lorraine. Do you know what I was going to say? Do you want to watch the Bombers? Uh huh. Wait, one second. Oh, very good. So you're making that connection to the illustration. Very good. All right, let's go to 102. Point to the first word, please. Make your finger there. One morning before the final game, the piercing hoot of the train whistle woke me with a start. I jumped out of bed and ran to the window. Over the rooftops, a plume of white smoke billowed in the distance. My heart leapt. I had forgotten. My brother was on that train. Bob was a star left winger for a professional team. He was coming home to rest an injured shoulder. So on this page, what do we learn about who's coming to visit? Mackenzie? His brother. His brother. And what do we know about his brother? What do we know about his brother, Jordan? His name is Bob. What does Bob do? What does Bob do when he is on the ice? He does. He's a professional hockey player. That's some good prior knowledge that's going to help us make inferences. All right, 103. Finger on 103. I arrived at the station late and out of breath. Coach Mateau, all the members of the Wolves, and half the town were there. After the cheers and noisy greeting had died down, I heard the coach say, Bob, the team has their final playoff game tomorrow. Would you come to our practice this afternoon? I could barely see my brother through the crowd. Sure, coach, he said. Then he spotted me. But first, I'm going to visit my family. The crowd moved aside, and he walked towards me whisked me up in one arm and hugged me tight. He looked like a hero in his ski cap. Stop right there. Don't flip. I want us to make an inference here. So we're learning a lot about his brother, Bob. Okay? So, on page 103, we learn that Bob is asked by the coach to come to the practice the next day. Right? But what does Bob say? Somebody raise your hand and tell me, what is Bob's response when he's asked that? Callie, what does Bob say when the coach asks, can you come to our practice? First, I need to visit my family. So this is the clue in the text that we're going to talk about. So under clue, I'm going to write, Bob wants to see his family before he helps at practice. Okay, is that what happened? Yes. Yes. Now, I want to know more about why. Why is Bob wanting to do this? So, my prior knowledge, because you know my family just moved to a different city, right? If I go visit my family in the new city that they live in, do you think that I'm just going to go off and ignore them and not go see them? Yeah. No. What do you think I'm going to do? If I go visit my family, they're two hours away, what is Miss Trapp going to do? Rosarius? Yeah, I'm going to ask them, can I come see you? Right? What do you think I'm going to do when I see them? Because you know I love my family. They come to visit us, right? <gasps> what, do you, what do you do when you love somebody or you like somebody you haven't seen in a while? Timothy? I'm going to hug them. I'm going to be so excited. And guess what? This weekend, I get to go see my family. So I know my prior knowledge is that if you're going to visit somebody that you don't see all the time, you're probably going to hug them because you're excited to see them. So my prior knowledge is hug family when 
you see them after a long time? I haven't seen my mom since she came to visit us. So that's been a while, hasn't it? So what inference can we make about Bob? What do we learn about Bob? We know that he wants to go see his family first, right, before he goes to practice to help out. My prior knowledge is when we go visit people, we want to hug them, we want to see them. So what do you think we can learn about Bob? What have we learned about him from this? Grateful? Yeah, he may be kind to his family. What else about that? I love, that's a great start to what we're looking for. Mackenzie? He loves his family. In specific, who does he love? Who is his brother in this story? Look in the story. What's Bob's brother's name? The kid that's playing. What's his brother's name? Danny. Danny. Very good. Bob loves Danny. And his family. So did the author tell us, did the author say, Bob, the professional player, loves his family? Did he say that? No, but what did we just do? We made an inference, and we're like, well, if Bob wants to go see his family, he probably loves them. All right, let's keep reading. You did a good job with your first inference. Turn the page. 104. 104. Point to the first word. I love seeing people focus their eyes on this page. That afternoon, as Bob and the coach skated out to practice, a ripple of excitement ran through the team. Everyone was thrilled to have a real pro teach us. At first, Bob worked the team through some passing and shooting drills. All the wolves played their best. But in our practice game, Travis tried to be the star. Instead of passing to Coteau, Travis attempted to stick handle through the whole team and was checked and lost the puck. What a puck hog, Coteau muttered. At the end of practice, Mr. Coteau called the team together. You've shown Bob and me that you have the skills to win tomorrow. But can you play as a team? Please think about that when you go home tonight. All right, let's make an inference there about what Coach Coteau was saying. Go in there, sis, I'm gonna work on you. So, you know what, I could have gone, but I just erased it. That's fine. So we're gonna make another inference. So on this page, I'm gonna read the last paragraph one more time. Because I wanna understand this a little bit better. The last paragraph, says, at the end of the practice, your eyes are on the book, at the end of the practice, Mr. Mateau called the team together. You've shown Bob and me that you have the skills to win tomorrow, but can you play as a team? Please think about that when you go home tonight. So the clue from the story that I want to talk about is when the coach says, can you play as a team? This is a good question because all of our stories have been about teamwork, right? So my clue here is the coach saying, can you play as a team? Now, I want to use some prior knowledge. What do we know about Travis? What do we know about Travis from this story? Morgan, what do we know about Travis? Um, Travis is a, not the coach, but that is what the coach does. Who is Travis, Italia? Yeah, he's the one that's not being very nice. Is he playing as a team? No. So my prior knowledge is that Travis is not a team player. So I want to know, what is 
the coach mean by this? I know that he's asking them, can you play as a team? I know that Travis is not a team player. He does not share the puck. He is not nice to his teammates. So why do you think the coach is saying that? What inference can you make? Rachel? Travis without saying Travis he's not being mean and saying Travis you're not a team player is he no. he's using this question to kind of say now I know that you have not been playing as a team so I'm going to say this nicely to make sure everybody is going to play as a team so our inference is coach is reminding everyone is he only talking to Travis? No, he's talking to the whole team. Reminding the team to work together or as a team. Because I think the coach probably knows that Travis isn't being the best team player. All right, let's finish up our story. Turn to page 106. Point to the first word. Yes, ma'am. He's not loyal. I love that you use that word from one of our old stories. He's not very loyal. He's thinking, me, me, me. I'm the best. Nobody's as good as me, right? We know that. That's using even more prior knowledge. All right, let's keep reading. I'll talk to you in a second, okay? 106, point to the first word. The next afternoon, a huge crowd cheered as the two teams took to the ice. The cheering became a roar when Bob walked to the world's bench. I crouched in goal, torn between eagerness and fear. A jumble of loud voices called out, Come on, Wolves! Come on, Marcus and Danny! And go, Bombers, go! From the opening face-off, our captain, Marcel, took charge and scored on a give-and-go with a sizzling shot to the goalie's stick side. Then, Anita scored in a wild scramble in front of the Bombers' net. We were flying high and leading 2-0. to zero. But in the final moments of the period, one of our defensemen tried to carry the puck out of the wolf zone instead of passing. He was checked, and the Bombers scored on me. I looked at our bench. Bob and Coach Matone just shook their heads. Okay, we're going to stop there. Tomorrow, we're going to make more inferences. Somebody tell me, what is an inference? Why do we make inferences? Remember, we have our chart up here to help you. What is an inference? First, tell me that. Callie, what's an inference? Getting an answer, kind of learning more. What are the parts of making an inference? Jordan? Text clues? What I know, and that gives us an inference. Very good. Go ahead and close your books for me. Tomorrow, you are going to get to make inferences on your own. And then now we are going to start looking at our vocabulary words for this series.